our scripture reading for this morning comes from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Listen now for God's word to us. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there would be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever played hide and seek? Maybe you ever played hide and seek. All right, so you kind of know what it is. When I was younger, I used to play with my siblings and my friends and my neighbors for hours. We had a lot of land because we lived in the country and we were always finding just the right place to hide. Now, sometimes I was the one hiding, but other times I was it. You know, that one person who had to do the hunting or the seeking. There aren't many rules to hide and seek. In fact, if you have any rules, usually the rules lie with the person who is it. Now, when you're it, you are to close your eyes, as we did, count to 100 and then shout, ready or not, here I come. Now sometimes these rules got bent just a little. Like for instance, if you were smart and you could count to 100 by fives. <laughs> or maybe you were able to just open your eyes a little bit to see your friend climbing under that bush. Those were ways that we could get around those rules, but we weren't supposed to. Yes, rules can be bent, but, you know, there are several realities attached to the person who is it. Let me give them to you. Number one, it will come. Number two, it will come only when it is ready. Number three, it will come whether you are ready or not. And number four, if you are not ready when it comes, you will have to pay the consequences. Yes, hide and seek can be challenging, but it also can be a lot of fun. Now in today's epistle reading, Paul stresses the importance of being ready for it, that is, the second coming of Christ. Paul begins, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Paul is assuring believers that it will happen. The day of the Lord will come. There are many places in scripture that talk about Christ's return. Though we are never told when he will come, as Christians, we must look for the signs of Christ's return, and then we must be prepared. A story is told about a tourist who stopped at a gas station while driving through West Texas. He noted a, noticed a piece of rope dangling from a sign that read, Weather Forecaster. How 
can you possibly tell the weather with a piece of rope? He asked the gas attendant. Well, it's simple, Sonny, was the droll answer. When the rope swings back and forth, it's windy. When it gets wet, it's raining. When it's frozen stiff, it's darn cold. And when it's gone, tornado. <laughs> to the Texan attendant, there are some things that are just obvious. Paul says that the imminent return of Jesus Christ is one of those things. You see, the question is not if Christ returns, but when. He will return. Like a thief in the night, Christ will appear when he is ready. The key is that we all need to be ready, too. So what does it mean to be ready? How do we prepare for Christ's return? What does Paul say about this? Paul warns that we must not allow anything in our lives to sway our moral alertness. Just as alcohol can influence our abilities to focus and make sound decisions, sin, or darkness as Paul puts it, affects our ability to make moral decisions. Think about the power of alcohol. Most people do not get drunk on one glass of beer or wine. But over the course of a night of drinking, the alcohol catches up, and a person becomes unable to make sound decisions. The same is true of sin. One little lie doesn't seem powerful, but one little lie leads to another and another and another. The entire situation the entire situation soon is out of control, like wildfire. We know that sin impacts our lives. One lie or one bad deed or one inappropriate touch leads to another, and soon, like wildfire, the story takes on a life of its own and is difficult to stop. <clears throat> Just think about the reports of sexual misconduct that we hear on the news every day. Sin impacts lives. In his letter to the Thessalonians, Paul encourages believers to stay in the light, for we are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Paul says we are to live in a constant state of preparedness. We are to be ready for Christ's return because as children of God, we already have the Lord with us through our faith. When darkness surrounds us, when troubles come, it is the saving love of Jesus Christ and not some distorted works righteousness that will sustain us and allow us to engage in lives of love and service. So how do we prepare? The good news is that Christ has made the preparations for us. We as humans could never ready ourselves because we could not pay for our sins alone. God doesn't intend for us to suffer God's judgment. It is Jesus Christ who paid the price by dying on the cross for us. Christ died in our place. God's plan is for us to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that this is called grace. Nelson Mandela taught the world a lesson in grace when after emerging from prison after 27 years and being elected president of South Africa, he appointed Archbishop Desmond Tutu to head an official government panel called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. The rules were simple. If a white policeman or army officer voluntarily faced his black accusers, confessed his crime, and fully acknowledged 
his guilt, he could not be tried and punished for that crime. Hardliners grumbled about the obvious injustice of letting criminals go free, but Mandela insisted that the country needed healing even more than it needed justice. At one hearing, a policeman named Vandy Broke recounted an incident when he and other officers shot an 18-year-old boy and burned the body, turning it on the fire like a piece of barbecue meat in order to destroy the evidence. <clears throat> Eight years later, Von de Brock returned to the same house and seized the boy's father. The wife was forced to watch as policemen bound her husband on a wood pile, poured gasoline over his body, and ignited it. The courtroom grew hushed as the elderly woman, who had lost first her son and then her husband, was given a chance to respond. What do you want for Mr. Van de Broek? The judge asked. She said she wanted Van de Broek to go to the place where they burned her husband's body and gather up the dust so she could give him a decent burial. His head down, the policeman nodded agreement. Then she added a further request. Mr. Van de Broek took all of my family away from me and I still have a lot of love to give. Twice a month, I would like for him to come to the ghetto and spend a day with me so I can be a mother to him. And I would like Mr. Van de Broek to know that he is forgiven by God and that I forgive him too. I would like to embrace him so he can know my forgiveness is real. Spontaneously, some of the courtroom began singing Amazing Grace as the elderly woman made her way to the witness stand. But Vanderbroek did not hear the hymn. He had fainted, overwhelmed by what the woman had said. Justice was not done in South Africa that day. Something beyond justice took place. The name for it? Grace. Rather than seeking justice for sin, an old woman absorbed the hurt and returned forgiveness instead. This is the story of Jesus. He absorbs the hurt and offers forgiveness if we trust him. As Paul writes, since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Friends, we must be ready for Christ's return. We must keep our eyes on him and be aware of our surroundings. We must push away the darkness of sin and hang on to the light of Christ. We must live as children of the light, even as we ready ourselves for our Savior's return. <coughs> Faye Inchbarn, a rural housewife who lived a generation ago, wrote this poem about the day of Christ's return. Listen to her words. Sometimes when everything goes wrong, when days are short and nights are long, when wash day brings so dull a sky that not a single thing will dry, when friends deplore my faded youth, and when the baby cuts a tooth, while John the baby last but one clings round my skirts till day is done, and fat, good-natured June is glum, 
and butcher's man forgets to come. Sometimes I say, on a day like this, I get a sudden gleam of bliss. Not some sunny day of ease he'll come, but on a day like one of these. Think back to that game of hide and seek. There are hiders, and there they, then there is the person who seeks, the person who is it. Friends, let me encourage you this morning. Remember the it and what it stands for. It will come. It will come only when it is ready. It will come whether you are ready or not. And if you are not ready when it is, you will have to pay the consequences. The same is true of Christ. Christ has come and Christ will come again. This is the good news of the gospel. This is the promise. We may not know the time or place, but we must be ready. Sisters and brothers, remember our calling. We are children of the light, the light of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Let us pray. <laughs> Many times, Lord God, we think we are ready, and yet we doubt, or we get sidetracked, or we get so consumed by our sins that we don't see the light. Help us to not only look for your light, but to walk in your light. Show us the way, Lord God, for you are indeed the way. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.